Good morning. Good morning. Oh, come on. There you go. Good morning. Good morning. Much, much better. Get loud. Wake me up. I'm a night owl. I'm not used to getting up at 5 a.m. So much so that when I went home after sunrise service, my brain said, okay, time to go to South Carolina. But it is great to see everyone this morning. Wonderful sunrise service. It was so good to see many of you out and back. But again, we come to celebrate because Jesus is risen. Say it with me like we did this morning. Jesus is risen. Yes, yes he is. Again, welcome to Mount Mitchell United Methodist Church as we celebrate Easter. Are there any announcements this morning? Any others? I got one. Uh, David Malden called me uh, last night and told me if, with all that was going on with them, he had forgotten to let us know. In past years, they've done at, at Beverly Church the selling of the onions, about ten pound bags of onions. He wanted me to announce it. This is the only day he can turn in names. So if anybody is interested in the ten pound bags of potatoes for twelve dollars, he says you don't have to pay those. Any others? I put a thank you on the back, but thank you for everybody that came last week to the pizza party and egg hunt. And thank y'all so much for all your donations of candy. We're still finding candy that got this <laughs> over there. Our candy jar for the kids will be replenished for a month. So thank you for your generosity. And don't forget about the snacks and stuff for the uh, police department. And Janice, you said you would run it through next Sunday. Or hang on. Because I know you were going to have it put on the CCM website. Did you want them today or still bring them for next Sunday? Bring them through this week, sir. And then they'll be delivered to the police department. So you can still bring individually wrapped stuff. And mine cares more is in your room. Okay. Awesome. Yes. Thank you to everybody that came to breakfast this morning. I think we had a good time socializing. Yes, we did. Yes, we did. And is there a chocolate over there? <laughs> oh, there are any other announcements? Chocolate just got us thrown off. Where's Ruth? She is not feeling well, so pray for her. Her stomach's a little upset, so pray for her. Any others? This is a place for being here. It's Easter Sunday, and we celebrate the risen Christ. Amen. Yes, that is a good announcement. He's alive and well and sitting at the right hand of God the Father. Now let us please stand as the light of Christ enters our midst.
Yeah. 
before I go any further, isn't the cross just beautiful? I was speaking to Janice, I think it was, and I was, I don't think I've ever seen the cross. I've been here almost three years and hadn't seen it. Then it dawned on me, wait, the first year I came after Easter. And then the pandemic. So no wonder I've not seen it. But it is absolutely beautiful for everyone that brought flowers. Thank you. Thank you so very much. And for those that brought it up, vacuumed the floor after the flowers and swept up, thank you. And those that will take it out, thank you. Are there any joys or prayer concerns this morning? I would like to lift up my poor sick husband. He has a miserable cold, and he's just, he's just pitiful. <laughs> poor thing, bless his heart. When we left sunrise service, Charlotte said, let me go see if Mallory has risen. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't want to tell one, but it was just so funny. Yeah, I did, you're right. <laughs> Are there any others? In it? Yeah, my grandson was uh, in a one-car accident uh, Thursday, I believe it was. <laughs> and he I do. Well, I do too. <laughs> yes, right. Pray for me so that I can get, get better and also pray for my sister to stop attacking me. <laughs> but that's what little sisters do. <laughs> it was so funny before service, he'd come up next to me. Pastor, I'm not feeling so well. I'm like, what? I'm sick. I've got a cold. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Uh, for our friend Skibo Lover, he's a friend to me, and Karen and Steve, he lives in Winston. Um, he's the one whose wife died last August, but he is going for a back procedure tomorrow, and there is risk involved. So I'd like to lift him up, lift him up, that the doctors will do what needs to be done to relieve some of the pain, and if there's no adverse effects, effects from it. Continue to uh, lift me up. I went to see my doctor this past week. I thought the journey was about over. Uh, she told me that when I was diagnosed, I was already stage three. And uh, that the radioactive iodine will continue to work for about six months. And after that, she will let me know if I'm cancer free. <laughs> so, uh, continue to pray for me. Uh, yes, ma'am. Kathy. Call the name again. Clyde Durberry. Clyde Durberry. Any others? Yes, Angela. Um, one of my friends at work, um, one of my nurses' husband, I'm sorry, youngest child, was um, killed this week. And they're investigating, but just pray for her and her kids and this whole situation. Yes, call the name again. His, her name's Audrey. 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 Any others? Jim. Friend who has ALS. She's at the point where she can't talk anymore. Friend with ALS. Has to be tough. Dave Maldon's daughter in law, Lindsay, right? Yes. We'll start chemo Tuesday for breast cancer. And it'll be an extended weeks of treatment and then surgery. Yes, remember David Malden's daughter-in-law as she begins her chemotherapy for breast cancer. Are there any others? Just the Ukrainian yeah. people and all that they're going through. Yes, the people of the Ukraine. Any others? Our country as well. Any others? The traveling safety people. 
or meeting with family and friends on this holiday. Yes. Yes. If you have an unspoken request that you would still like to give to God, let it be known by your sign of surrender. Lord, it's been another one of those weeks that you've been right there. And knowing that you're right there, we know that we can face anything. And knowing this, we can truly surrender all. Let us pray. Father, oh, thank you for this day. This Easter morning, and these your Easter people. A people reborn with a new life because of an empty tomb. Healed from sin. Free from the chains and bounds, binds of death. Thank you for this day. Thank you for loving us enough to send your son, your only son, for us. Now, Father, knowing that you love us that much, we know that you're listening. We know that you hear us. And, Father, you've heard your children cry. And we know without a shadow of a doubt that you will move according to your plan. And we claim that, Father. We claim healing for all these petitions according to your plan. Heal as you see fit. Whether it's through medicine, modern medicine, I believe that you heal in that manner. But I also believe that you heal divinely, Lord. Lord, whether it's your touch or whether you touch through a doctor or a nurse or any medical professional, Father, we know ultimately that it's you touching us through them. Now, Father, for those medical professionals, be with them as they seek to heal, as they combat sickness and those that may still be coming in with COVID, they put themselves at risk for us. Isn't that exactly what Jesus did for us? He put himself at risk and died for us. So Lord, these petitions we leave in your hands and we claim them done through the resurrected Savior. And claim it so by praying in the manner in which he taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please stand as you are able and join with me in reaffirming our faith with the Apostles' Creed located on page 881. 881. I believe in God the Father Almighty maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
If you will please remain standing as our tithes and offerings are brought forward. children will please come forward. What's it look like? Three. A three. What's? Whoops. 
What's the three got to do with these? Three days. The three days that he spent in the grave, and because of his death, now we're saved, right? Okay, now. If I turn it like that, what does it remind us of? A W. What's a W you got to do with Easter? He, he wants over death. Worship. It, not just today. Do we celebrate Christmas just one day? No, we celebrate his birth all year. We celebrate Thanksgiving. Not just the Thanksgiving, but all the time because we're thankful. And we don't just worship him on Easter Sunday. We worship him every time, every day in our homes, in our cars, here at church. And he is worthy of this, uh, of this worship. Now, when we come and we learn about him, what does he want us to do? Go out and love He wants us to go out and witness to others. And when he met with these disciples after he arose, that's what he said, right? He said that he wanted them to go out and tell people about him. And if I turn it this way, it's an E. It's an E. And that stands for? Easter. Stands for Easter, God's everlasting love. And because he died on the cross for us, then someday we can go to heaven and have Eternal life. eternal life with him. That's his eternal plan. That was his mission. That's why he came. Okay? So he's the Messiah. Messiah. Well, look at he was three days in the grave. Worship. We're to worship him and to witness for him. Easter. And it's Easter, and not just Easter, but all the time, we should know that he has everlasting love for us. And he has going to, to prepare a place for us. That's what he told his disciples. And he said, I will come again. Okay? Now, we're going to do our candy a little bit different today. Now, I'm going to give you two bags of M&M's. I want you to go give them out to somebody in the church. Try to pick somebody you've never given to before. I want you to give them a card. The sweet truth of Easter. These candies tell a story. The best news you will ever hear is about Jesus dying on the cross so that we could be brought near. So hold them and turn them and you will see the M become O W and E and then a three. The E stands for Easter, God's everlasting love and his eternal plan. It reminds us of the cross and the way God rescued sinful man. The three represent the three days Jesus spent in the grave. By his death, his children, he did save. The end reminds us of the mercy the Messiah showed as he died in our place and the miracle of the resurrection so we can see him face to face. The dozen reminds us that he alone is worthy of our praise. And Christ calls us to be his witnesses around the world for all our days. Now, I'm going to give you two cards. That's going to be right. Give you two cards and two packets of M&M's. I want you to give both M&M's away. And as you give an M&M away, give them a card too. And I want you to say to them, Christ has risen. And if they give you an M&M, what are you going to say back? Hallelujah. You could, or you can say, Christ has risen indeed. So what are you going to say? Christ has risen. All right, here's two cards. And then come back up here, and I've got something for you. you got to give both away, but I've got something for you when you come back. I'm sure you won't. Okay, you can give it 
to you, Daddy. I know what's going to happen next. I know. He knows too. <laughs> No, you can't give him both of them. You've got to give the other one to somebody else. You have to two different people. <laughs> Amen.
24 verses 1 through 12. I'll give you just a moment to find it and a moment for those at home to find Luke 24 1 through 12. As you are able, let us please stand and the reading of God's Word. Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came into the sepulcher, bringing the spices which they had prepared, and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulcher. And they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass as they were much perplexed thereabout. Behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. And as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men, and be crucified, and the third day rise again. And they remembered his words and returned from the sepulcher and told all these things unto the eleven and to all the rest. It was Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary the mother of James and, and other women that were with them which told these things unto the apostles. And their words seemed to them as idle tales. And they believed them not. Then arose Peter and ran into the sepulchre, and stooping down, he, he beheld the linen cloths laid by themselves, and departed, wondering in himself at that which was come to pass. The word of God for us, the people of God. Be to God. You may be seated. The title of the message this morning is, Mary Did You Know? Does anyone know where that title comes from? A song. a song, exactly right. I love music. Absolutely love music. As a matter of fact, during the two hour break after sunrise service and this service, I was listening to music. Pentatonics and others. How many of you know pentatonics? Oh, my goodness. Yes. Oh. But this particular song, Mary Did You Know, was written by Mark Lowry, Southern Gospel singer, sang with the Gave their vocal band for years. And comedian. He's the one that came up, and I use this line all the time. It's not southern tea unless it can double as pancake syrup. <laughs> I looked at somebody, and they know what. I thought about that this morning when you mentioned pancake syrup. But it comes from his song, Mary, did you know? And one of the stanzas in the song, the opening stanza, as a matter of fact, reads like this. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would one day walk on water? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would save our sons 
and daughters. Did you know that your baby boy was come to make you new? That this child you delivered would soon deliver you. Now this might be a little unusual message for Easter. We're actually going to start from the beginning and work our way quickly to the empty tomb. And this song, it asks some very intriguing questions. First of all, the song suggested that Mary was in need of deliverance. How can this be if she, if she bore Christ? And secondly, the question asked, did Mary know? Did she even know why the Christ child that she delivered had come into the world? These are some very interesting questions to ask. And this morning, I'm going to try to answer them. I'm going to try to answer that question, Mary, did you know? And let's start with Luke chapter 1, verses 26 through 29. And it talks about Mary being troubled. Now, in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and considered what manner of greeting this was. Now, we're going to focus on verse number 29. We see that, that Mary was troubled by what the angel had told her. And she considered what manner of salutation was this? What's he saying to me? I don't understand. And the first question we might have is, why was Mary troubled? Gabriel had just called her favored and blessed. And if you think about it, most likely she would have been troubled at these statements because of her own humility. Mary worshipped the Lord and she was humble before him. And she realized her state of unrighteousness before a holy God. And she couldn't figure out why an angel would appear to her and call her favored and blessed. The reason why Mary was favored, and this is my thinking, was the reason I think that she was favored and blessed is not just that she would be the one to carry and give birth to the Son of God, but that she had received the revelation concerning who He was. Now, I want to stop here and make a crucial and tremendous point. Jesus is the Savior of all who know and understand who He is and who accept Him as their Lord and Savior. Now, if you look down in verses 30 and 33, and this is a teaching sermon if you haven't noticed that already. If you look in verses 30 and 33, Mary was told that her child would be named Jesus. That he would receive the, the throne of David. And that his kingdom would have no end. She was being led in on the fact that Jesus was this long awaited Messiah. The coming King and Savior. And I imagine Mary thinking to herself, well, well how can this be? And verse 34 says that, that she considered deeply what she had been told. And beginning in verse number 45 and continuing through what is called the Song of Mary, we see that Mary had faith to believe. But as we will come to see, I don't think she ever stopped pondering the things that she had been told. Now, the, the New King James Version says Mary considered the greeting and the news that were shared with her. The New American Standard Bible says that, that she kept pondering what kind of salutation this might be. She pondered what she had been told. 
In other words, she did not forget. But she kept replaying the words over and over in her mind, I believe. And these words would stick in her mind. Until the day that she would eventually see them unfold in reality. Mary, she believed in faith. She believed in the faith that, that she had heard would come to pass. But she clung to those words through the years. And she tried to piece them together, trying to, to figure out exactly what they meant. And as different parts of all the prophecies came true. Mary wanted to see her faith become reality. She wanted to understand more about what she had heard. We also find out that Mary kept those words. Luke 2, 15 through 19. So it was when the, when the angels had gone away from them into heaven. That the shepherds said to one another, let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass. Which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Now when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told them concerning the child. And all those who heard it marveled at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Remember that last part. And because we're going to focus on that. Before we look at this verse, it, may, it must be noticed how verse 17 says that the shepherds made known what they had been told concerning the child. In 11, they were told, for there is born unto you, unto you this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. When Mary was told this by the shepherds, she kept this information in her heart. So, here's a question I want to ask you. Did Mary understand the significance of what she heard? Now, Mary, being a Jew, surely knew the prophecies concerning the Messiah. But were the revelations of the Old Testament enough to help her understand what the Messiah what the child she had just given birth to could personally do for her. Now many of us understand how the Old Testament underlies and how it helps us understand that the Messiah was supposed to be or what the Jews think was supposed to be a militant warrior who would vindicate Israel. And seek revenge for the Jewish people. But as, here again is another musical reference. As Michael Card stated in his song entitled Scandalon. They were looking for a king to conquer and kill. Who, who would have ever thought. He'd be so meek. And humble. Mary did know that Christ, the Messiah, would be a deliverer. But I don't think she fully knew in what sense. I don't think there's any way she could have known at that point in time that the child that was living in her womb that she would give birth to would be the deliverer of everyone's soul, including hers. So what did she do? She kept those words in her heart. The American Standard Bible says, but Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. She treasured what was heard as though the words were extremely valuable. And the Bible commentator Matthew Henry says, she laid the evidence together and kept them in reserve. To be compared with the discoveries that should afterwards be made to her. 
by comparing what she had heard with what she would eventually behold. She would then come to understand in what way her child, Christ, the Christ, was the Savior. Mary's soul would be pierced. Luke 2, 33 through 35. And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rising of many in Israel, and for a sign which will be spoken against. Yes, a sword will pierce through your own soul also, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. Now, we just heard how Jesus was prophesied to cause many people to fall. 1 Peter 2 and 8 says that Christ is a stumbling stone and a rock of offense. They stumbled being disobedient to the word to which they were also appointed. Jesus would cause many to fall if they rejected him. But he would also cause many people in Israel to rise. That means that, that those who heed his words will be exalted. And this was a revelation that had yet to be realized, I believe, with Mary. Now, what does it mean in verse 35 when it says that a sword will pierce through Mary's own soul? I'm glad you asked that. I believe that it, that it means that one day she will be convicted of the revelation of who her son truly was. Mary was faced with the reality of who her son was. And John 19 and 26 says, When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing by her, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. And I am sure at this moment when she saw her son hanging on the cross to pay the sins for all mankind, her heart was pierced by both astonishment and grief. I also believe that Mary at some point was pierced and convicted of who her child really was. What would this revelation of Jesus accomplish within Mary? What would it, would it accomplish within anyone else who understands? Again, look, look back at verse 34. And it says that Jesus will cause the rising of many in Israel. Anyone who believes in Jesus Christ will rise. Now this word, the Greek word that means to rise, is Anastasia. Has anyone ever saw the movie Anastasia? Well, the name Anastasia derives from this. Anastasia. Well, in the movie, the main character's name comes from this word, and it means resurrected. Anastasia was resurrected and found from where she was thought to be lost. Now, let's put this into our text. Therefore, all who understand who Jesus is will be found. They will no longer be lost in sin. They will be resurrected into eternal life in Jesus Christ. Final point I want to make this morning. Mary remembered the words. Now we're at the empty tomb. Mary remembers the words. Luke 24, 1 through 10. Now on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they and certain other women with them came to the tomb bringing the spices which, spices which they had prepared. But they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. Then they went in and did not find the body of Jesus. And it happened as they were greatly perplexed about this, 
that behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. Let's stop right there. If you are in a graveyard and you go to visit somebody, the graves burst open and there's two men standing there shining brightly, all dressed in white. What are you going to do? But that did not happen. Why do you think that is? Well, I think the Spirit of God moved upon them and said, Stay. Hear what they have to say. Then as they were afraid and bowed their faces to the earth, they said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He's not here, for He is risen. Remember how He spoke to you when He was still in Galilee? saying the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and on the third day rise again. Now here's the key verse. And they remembered His words. Then they returned from the tomb and told all these things to the, things to the eleven and to all the rest. It was Mary Magdalene and Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them who told these things to the apostles. Now, we're told who's at the tomb. There's quite a few women, and one of them is Mary, the mother of James. Who's James? Brother of Christ, right? So who's Mary, the mother of James? The mother of Jesus. And it makes sense, doesn't it? This mother, who gave birth to her son, would be there at the moment of his death and at the moment of preparing the body. She would be there. It makes sense. And it, it also struck me when it said, and they remembered his words. Mary remembered the words of her son that he had spoken in public. I remember, oh, I think that she remembered every word he had spoken throughout those 33 years at this time. And his death. All those memories flooding back. She remembered his words. And I believe that she pondered every single word spoken in those 33 years. Especially when he said that he had to be about his father's business when he was in the temple. And Mary and Joseph didn't understand what he meant. But I believe in this moment she understood because she remembered those words. She may have remembered how he said that you might kill this body but in, or tear this temple down but in three days I will rise again. I believe that she remembered and in this moment at this empty tomb it all comes full circle and she realizes fully with everyone else who her son really is. I believe that Mary was just like many of us. That before we came to know Christ as our Savior and Lord, I believe that she had many questions in her heart. But she eventually came to understand that Jesus is the resurrection and the life. And this morning, I want to ask you, do you know Jesus as the resurrection and the life. If you're pondering in your heart who He is. Then be assured that if you believe in the resurrected Lord. And I want to also tell you something else. The tomb's still empty. He didn't need it a second time. But if you're pondering who He is. Then be assured that if you believe in Him. If you put your faith and your trust in Him then you too will share in the resurrection and have new eternal life in heaven. Now let God's people say. Amen. Now stand as you are able and turn with me to hymn number 310. 310. And after the song we will have a musical benediction. Hymn number 310. <laughs>
Go in peace and be God's Easter people.